Hi, I'm Charlie Montotuyella with BlueBearFlutes.com, and as you know, our YouTube channel is Blue Bear Flutes, as well as our Instagram, and so many other places you'll find us on the web. Uh, today is the week four lesson of my beginning to intermediate Native American flute playing class. If you are a beginning to intermediate level Native American flute player, or really any kind of flute player, or just someone who happened on this video and decided to, to keep watching, please keep on because you'll find out some excellent tips. I've been playing and making Native American flutes for quite some time, most of my life in fact, and I will be glad to share some of my experiences with you. Having said that, today's video is uh, song number two, which is the fourth week of the Blue Bear Flutes beginning to intermediate level flute playing class, and song number two is Parts Unknown. The reason I call this song Parts Unknown is because as you and I sit here, uh, we're actually going to write this song. So right at the moment, I'm not sure what the parts are. Um, but uh, as with each and every one of our flute playing lessons, it's good to get into good habits and begin good practices. We'll uh, go over some advanced techniques in a moment. So even if you're an advanced Native American flute player, you'll probably get something from these videos. Um, however, for the time being, we need to start off the very basic basic uh, because that's how beginning flute players become excellent flute players. So the first thing you should do, and I, I would like to stop here too, I know I've mentioned before, but if you have a Native American flute with an extra fingering here, there's five holes on this flute, and if you have one that has a hole here or anywhere else, if your flute maker told you in emails, advertisements, or what have you to keep something covering that hole, just keep it covered. In all uh, purposes and intents, it's basically the same as my five hole flute here is. We'll talk about that in other videos. If you haven't seen my YouTube channel, feel free to check it out. I've got videos to explain all about that. But for the time being, like I say, if they gave you a piece of leather tape or just told you to keep your finger on that hole, keep your finger on that hole. You're doing the same thing we are. You're not missing out on a thing. And this flute, of course, if you're a five hole flute player and you're the first time you've ever heard of a six hole flute, this flute plays as many notes as any six hole flute does. And I know that sounds uh, counterintuitive, but so does a four hole flute. It's just a matter of knowing how, and that's the easy part. <laughs> so uh, first thing you need to do, if you're beginning our class, is to cover all the holes on the flute with your finger. And whatever you do, I'm just gonna pretend there's not a finger in here if you're playing a six hole flute. So cover all your holes, and then leave your fingers where they're located, but remove the fingerings. Remove your fingers from the fingerings, uncover them and then put the flute up to your mouth. Play that top note. Usually the top note is the easiest on any Native American flute and just about any flute to play, to be honest with you. If you don't have the possibility of making a mistake by covering a hole up wrongly, then you're more likely to play it correctly. That's my theory anyway. Uh, so, and honestly, after having played for so much of my life, this is how I start off on every concert, every new flute, every anything. I always pick up my flute, You'll see me do it in videos. I'll pick it up. I'll be kind of, looks like I'm nervously moving my fingers around here, but I'm not. I'm feeling where the holes are so that my hands develop a, what's called an athletic memory of the location where they need to be. So that's what I'm telling you right now. Just cover those holes up, uncover the holes. First note. If that note sounds good, go on to the next note. When you cover this hole, make sure you cover it accurately and thoroughly. Don't cover it partially. And don't stick your finger somewhere you don't expect it to be. Like right here, we're partially covering the hole because we overshot. This is uh, how you develop good habits of playing the flute. So uncover, then cover this hole. If that hole sounds good, keep that one covered. Don't change it. Don't roll your finger off of it and then cover this hole. Keep it exactly the same and then cover this hole. It makes a good clear tone. That's how you'll know that you're doing this properly. Then the next fingering. If you come up with a sound that's, that doesn't change much or it sounds kind of weird, then chances are you're not fully covering the hole. When I was in band as a youth, they told us to practice in front of a mirror. That will help you immensely if you are having a difficult time covering those holes. If you practice in front of the mirror, not only can you see where your mouth is and how it's playing, that you're not playing sideways over here like this, <laughs> and also so that those fingers are not partially covering these holes. If you notice right now, 
none of my holes are covered up completely. So, as you play, that's where we left off. The next hole you need to cover, if you come up with a sound that's then chances are you're partially covering that hole. Let's see if you can see it right there, where I'm partially covering that hole. So, one thing we'll talk about too in later videos is confidence. I know I've talked about it briefly in some of our previous videos, and I have actually on our YouTube channel specifically a video about confidence and how that's really one of the major secrets to being able to play the flute is just play confidently. We have other videos on that subject as well and other excellent secret and tip videos on how to play the Native American flute. But if you make a mistake, I just skipped a note. I mean, that's not even really a good mistake, but it's an example. Just pretend that's what you meant to do. All I did was play the scale, but hey, I skipped a note. I didn't cover this fingering, I covered both fingerings. And if you haven't figured out the fingerings, we do have fingering charts for that on our online class page, on our info page, and uh, of course we have videos for it as well. The fingerings are very simple with the Native American flute, as we went over in the first, second, and third videos, just basically all holes uncovered. Once again, ignoring a sixth hole if you've got one there. All holes uncovered is the highest note. Cover this one, cover the next one, cover that one, cover that one. Cover that one. In the process of going down the scale, don't leave a fingering uncovered. Not at, not at this present time. We do have uh, scales we'll talk about next. Uh, that's going to be our next lesson, as a matter of fact, getting into alternative scales. Now see, you heard that little sound there? That's because I wasn't covering it completely. And you hear me transitioning into that note. It's a sign you're not covering the whole all, all the way. So, it's really quite easy. The simplest instrument I have said time and time again in the entire world. So, breathe deeply, sit up straight, hold the flute, go back up the scale. You get really bored of this after a while, and that's okay. Being bored of it means that you're progressing. It means that you've gotten to the point that you feel like you're good at it. You may not be good at it yet, but you feel like you're good at it. So just you have to keep a mental check on yourself uh, before you mentally wreck yourself and make sure that you, uh, you actually are good at playing the scale. So... You don't have to go fast. All I did was go through some of the techniques we talked about in lesson one. If you haven't watched week one's lesson, uh, some of the techniques we talk about are long phrasing and tonguing or pronouncing techniques. We used three different uh, techniques on pronouncing the notes and that's or We went over them more elaborately in week one's lesson. If you missed those, go back. Uh, they're there for you, so go back over it and practice them again. As you go down the scale, you can find different ways to play the scale. Eventually, the idea is you progress and play in the scale. Once again, talking to absolute beginners, you progress and play in the scale in a way that you enjoy hearing it. Then you move on to becoming an intermediate flute player where you learn how to play the scale really good, and that's usually most of your song, as I've discovered. go down the scale melodically and go up the scale melodically with techniques we have already practiced. And intermediate flute players a lot of times will find themselves playing the scale over and over again because you kind of you kind of get used to it. So easy stuff. Um, one thing that we'll talk about with this particular lesson, Parts Unknown, the song that we're going to write, 
is the next note. What is the next note I'm going to play? How do I come up with the next note? That's an advanced technique. It is really an important one. It's uh, how you're going to play the flute. So we'll talk about this next note idea. And we'll also talk about the growth of the scale. Uh, so at the moment, let's go ahead and see what the song is we're going to write. I'm going to set this flute down for just a moment because I will mostly need it for playing the song, not writing the song. Um, this method of writing music is not one I have invented. It's not one that, to my knowledge, anybody recently has invented. It's been around for a long, 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 long time, uh, probably since the ancient Egyptians or longer. And uh, it's something that I find is a good way, especially if you're an immediate flute player and you've gotten kind of into a rut or you feel like your music's going stale, you don't know where to go next, that's what this is about. This is gonna help you find a good place to go take your music next. And if you consider yourself an advanced flute player, which you know sometimes you're kind of on the border of one or the other, then this may still be a very good technique for you because it's something that's uh, using chaos theory. It's using, uh, to quote Jeff Goldblum, uh, it's, <laughs> I love Jurassic Park, but uh, it's using uh, chaos theory um, or it's using random. You know, random is a, is a technique. So we have a die, and uh, this is just a regular die. I actually, for the first video I made on YouTube on how to do this, I used a die I made myself. So you don't have to use a store-bought piece of plastic with dots on it. You don't have to do that. You can use one you make. Uh, carve a piece of wood, as people have did in times of memorial. Uh, use something else, you know, use uh, six different cards. Uh, or a piece of paper you can write numbers on. You can say one on one piece of paper, two on the second piece of paper, three, and go through the number six, or however many numbers you feel like you need. Um, I'm saying six numbers, and I'm talking about a five-hole flute, or you modern six-hole flute players that have to keep that hole covered up, basically still a five-hole flute. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, uh, it takes six numbers to do this. And the reason it takes six numbers to do this is because there's all covered is one, two, three, four, five, six. And actually my numbering system is the other way. We're gonna start counting from the top. So all uncovered is one note, two notes, three notes, four notes, five notes, six notes is all holes covered. Whether that be a six hole, modern six hole Native American flute or a five hole flute or any really any other flute that is made from Native American pentatonic. Penta means five, five notes. So why do you have six notes? Because the top note is a repeat, an octave it's called. That means it's one level higher of the same note at the bottom. So the bottom note is the same as the top note. Now, if you have modern six hole flute, keep that one covered to play the top note because if you don't, it's gonna play a weird sound if you uncover all the holes. So once again, the bottom note and then the top note are the same. They're one octave apart. This is a lower octave note, that's a higher octave note. So that's why you need six markings. Okay, easy stuff. And I'm sorry if I'm going over this too much for any of you who are more advanced than this. So uh, it is a great technique, however. So as you see, we have a sheet of paper. We have five white dots on the front of what looks like a little flute. And we have a die. And if you have a sixth finger in there, then third hole that's not being shown on this paper. Pretend it doesn't exist right now, that's just fine. But uh, we're gonna draw dots here. And, and honestly, if you wanna use that sixth hole, use seven sheets of paper and write the number seven on it and, and renumber yourself. And then for some reason, play a random number that's added to it. <laughs> it's not a good idea, anyway. So we're gonna take this die, we're gonna roll it. It landed on a four. And so right here, we're gonna go one, two, three, four. We're gonna cover all of these holes when we play this note. So you can't just cover that fourth note. If you did, it'll play a sour note. You have to cover everything in succession, just like the flute scale. There's a four again. I usually start watching whenever I roll doubles like that, when I roll the same thing twice, because I'm not gonna if it's just tending, if it's the way it's popping out of my hand, I don't want to do it that way again if I can uh, avoid it. I'm going to show you what happens when we roll that six here in just a moment. 
So I rolled a two, that means we cover the top two holes, or rather cover down to the second hole. There's three. This is going to be a good piece of music, I can tell already. Oops, hot, hot, start. Frightened too much. I'm excited. Okay, and then come on, six. There's another two. And then a three. Hopefully I get a six here so I can show you what to do with a six. Another two. Boy, this is an interesting song. It's got a lot of variation, a lot of top note. Five. That means you cover all five plain fingerings. Four. This is good stuff. It's going to be a, a really nice song, or at least it has some good potential, I should say. Come on, six. Another two. Okay, if this next one's not a six, I'm going to make it a six. How about that? Nope, it's a five. So let's make this one a six. When you roll a six, and you can do this anyway, but this is how I'm going to do it here. When you roll a six, you want to leave all of them uncovered. So if this is covering one hole, and this is covering two holes, you'd cover two holes, and this is covering the top three. If you roll a three, you cover all three of the top holes. See, this is your mouthpiece up here. That's the bottom of the flute. If you cover a four, you're going to cover from the four hole up. If you cover a five, you're going to cover all five holes. Or you could say, if you roll a four, you're going to cover the four first holes in the scale. And if you roll a six, don't cover any. So that's how this is going to work. I stopped right here. So I'm going to draw a line right there so we know where to stop. And just to go over things so that you can see them clearly, we have four holes covered, four holes covered, one hole covered. And we have two holes covered, three holes covered, two holes covered, three holes covered, two holes, five holes, four holes, two holes, and no holes covered. Now bear in mind, I'm reading this upside down. So <laughs> you please forgive me if I make a mistake. I'm going to take my time with it so that we can see how this looks. And I'm going to go kind of slow here. I'm not going to play any technique with this. And um, once again, in just a moment, we're going to talk about what comes next, what note to play next which is important stuff. Um, so keep an eye on the, the notes on the paper and listen to me play. And then I'll play them again so that you can watch my fingerings if necessary. But just to get an idea, Looks like I played them all right. Okay, so if you want to watch my fingerings this time, I'm still reading the music because, you know, I don't have this memorized. This is a random song that we just came up with. And the reason I might say that looks good or this looks good is because, my gosh, I've been playing for a long time. <laughs> I can kind of tell what's happening. So um, anyway, let's take a look here. So you think to yourself, that doesn't really sound like Native American flute music. And you're right. That's okay. It's the notes that we needed. How to play it is up to you. So you can play this any way you want to, as long as you go in that order of the notes. That's what, that's what really counts, is playing it in that order of the notes. So, and, and we're still not talking about the next note. That's the technique I want to share with you. But uh, this will actually help you decide what the next note is. This is mechanically deciding the next note, not mentally deciding the, the next note. That's separation I want you to understand. So this is how I'm going to play this song and make it sound more like a Native American flute song. Now you can do this with anything. You can do it with Yankee Doodle. You can do it with Mary Had a Little Lamb. Should be coming around the mountain. Uh, any song that's in a minor pentatonic type scale, Amazing Grace, you can play any of this stuff and make it sound like a Native American flute song by playing it with style and with technique. And that's what we talked about there again in the first lesson, using those three different tonguing or pronunciation techniques, uh, long phrasing, and then uh, the jumping bird technique we did in lesson two. Uh, so going over these different techniques, vibrato um, is so incredibly important. 
let's see where I put vibrato in this, this piece of music. Once again, I'm in control. I'm the driver. I may be driving this bus, but I didn't make the bus. The bus is sitting down there for us. I'm just driving. So let's see how this goes. And, and once again, I'm going to use the techniques we talked about, some phrasing that we talked about, and just basically make this sound more presentable or more palatable, if you would, to your ear. Can I skip a note? Yeah, I made that a four instead of a five. So let's start at the beginning. Now that was a kind of a delayed flute change there. So it sounds like I'm adding an extra note, but technically it's a grace note is what they call it in orchestra. So one more time, I'm going to play this again. I might play it differently the second time, the third time, the fourth time. That's okay. Uh, but how I'm playing it makes it sound more melodic. It's really, really very important. That's really a good beginning to a song, and, and like I said when I was writing it, this looked pretty cool. You know, it's something you can use as an advanced or an intermediate flute player. If you've gotten to where you've become kind of bored with what you've been playing, take what I just wrote, take a screen capture of it, and go play it. You know, find a way to make it sound good. When you do that, it opens up a whole new door for you. And and don't even don't even focus on the music. Like I said, that's the that's the next step. Let's go ahead and keep rolling some of the die here and see what we come up with next. I like to do things random because typically when you do things random, you don't always get something pretty. <laughs> Life is like that. Oh my gosh. So many fish in the sea that you think, what was the creator thinking? We were just looking at pictures of the sunfish yesterday. Hoo -hoo. It's like it was incomplete. You know, who thought up this one? Where's the other half? <laughs> so you can uh, find ways and, and enjoy it. I mean, sunfish really, even though they're weird, they're really kind of beautiful to me. I, I love them. I, it's a giant creature that looks like it's got half a body. It's just, its uniqueness is what makes it cool, you know? So that's okay. If you find that some of the notes that we're writing, and I'm really hoping that we're writing some that don't, it's just like wrong, you know, and, I, and there is no right or wrong. There's not. I'm not really trying to tell you that. But, but if you find that some of what we're writing here doesn't seem like it meshes well or the melody isn't what you're looking for, guess what? You can change it. The die doesn't tell you everything. Random doesn't tell you anything. Nobody, nobody in the world, nobody. Oh, my gosh, I can't stress this. As a sentient being, nobody in the world. No one, zero, <laughs> negative zero, if there was such a number. Um, nobody's in control of you, except for you. There's no amount of manipulation, brainwashing, advertising, me explaining to you on the smallest level. There's nothing in the world that will control you, except for you. So that's a four. We're going to start down here. In other words, you are in control of your destiny. And trust me on this. I'll have videos about it in the future. I may have mentioned it. I think I mentioned it in my About Me video. Uh, but uh, I came from nothing. So let's see, number five. I had nothing and developed my life based on something I enjoy. I hope that all of you do that same exact thing. That is so... Enjoying life is so important, and the only way you can do that is finding the things that you like to do and going with them. Okay, come on, weird sound. I mean, there's a lot of fives in this song, so we're kind of staying in the bottom. 
range of the flute. I'm going to have to start using some of my special pencils for this because this graphite is so shiny it looks like it's white. Okay, so we wrote more notes and I'm going to go ahead and write a stop right here so we know where we're stopping. I don't even know. Usually I do this in tens and I probably did, let's see here, four and yeah, we did. How about that? I usually do this in tens. I haven't paying attention this time. <laughs> That's random. That's okay. That's good stuff. So this die helped me. It's a tool to help me write the notes. How I play the notes is up to me. If you want to get more critical about it, you can get another die or use this one again and write down the techniques of each one of the, the styles that you want to play. Like if you want to use the different tonguing techniques, the ta, the da, or the la sound, or anything else that we talked about. If you want to write down a number by all these techniques, put vibrato as number five, you know, just anything you want to. You can do that. Roll the dice again, start back at your beginning place in line, and this is what I'm going to do technique on this one, this is what I'm going to do technique on this one, this technique for this one, and so on and so on, if you want to. Myself, I like to have a little, little control here. And once again, this is an exercise. It's a practice technique. Uh, I don't do this on my own time, you know, for how I want to play the flute. Uh, maybe I should, and I have written some songs this way for videos, but you know, for me, it would definitely work to get me out of a rut, but I'm usually not in a rut because I'm in the shop making flutes all day <laughs> and uh, surrounded by other great flute players. And uh, that always helps. But, uh, but anyway, um, let's play this song and let's see what it sounds like and maybe I'm not like some of it and I'll change it and that's what we're going to talk about the next note so all holes covered two holes three holes four holes all holes covered four holes all holes covered four holes all holes covered and it gets kind of boring there at the end <laughs> So, you know, does that work? I mean, yeah, it kind of works, but still, it's not exactly what I want to do. So let's try it one more time. Let's see, is that a three? Yeah, that's a three, okay. It's kind of shiny back here. So, except for my little da-da-da technique that I did in there, it's kind of like what's going on so it sounds like maybe the the ending of something but i really should have wrote a beginning for you know what i mean so it sounds like if i was uh See how the beginning part I just played randomly there again I, I catered it because of my experience I thought you know this is gonna sound kind of good and that's gonna sound like it's ending and that's what I did so um, I made up something randomly if you would myself that sounded like it would go with this if this were an ending keep that in mind well guess what you just wrote the ending of a really great song and now all you got to do is backtrack and find out like I did what would sound good for the beginning so that's kind of okay but let's say this was intended to be the beginning of a song let's pretend this here doesn't exist i'll set my dice over here it doesn't exist and then let's pretend this is supposed to be the beginning of the song so i mean that da, 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 gets kind of boring so let's do this let's take See, this pencil has another feature on it. Uh, let's take this eraser, take a note off of that. I'm gonna take two notes off of this. Let's see where we're at here. So all I did was changed what the next note would be. Let's see what that sounds like. So let's see how that goes. Oh, 
I missed it, missed it again. I keep wanting to play a song, as you can tell. <laughs> so. Now, playing it like that, those were all the notes that were written. Playing it like that um, really makes me feel like it needs to do something else. So you can kind of feel what the next note's gonna be. Once again, the next note technique that I want you to know is still a little bit different, but they're on the same lines as this next note. So what should I do? Uh, I feel like I should keep playing after that because it ends on a note that's like, hey, what happened? You know, is is that it? Is that the end of it? So I need to come up with another note, right? That idea, that feeling that you need to come up with another note is the driving force behind what I want you to think of or what you should think of or maybe what you can think of. Because uh, once again, I'm not trying to change you as a person and control you. What you can think of is going to come next. So you think to yourself, well, that kind of, it didn't really end. It's like it's a cliffhanger. You know, what, what do I do next? Make something. Okay, let's try that. easy to memorize after a while you know so all I did was play the beginning couple of notes four or five notes and then I rolled into something different the second time I played it okay I mean it's the stuff writes itself I, I, I can't tell you easiest instrument in the world I cannot stress it enough so what is the next note you know that's up to you when you're playing the Native American flute or any instrument you know I play multiple instruments but the Native American flute is like my life's blood these days so um, when you're playing the flute, what the next note is, is something you need to be thinking about while you're playing. You can do that with that long phrasing technique we talked about. While I'm playing that long note, I'm thinking, do I want to go down next? Do I want to go up next? Do I want to do some kind of technique? And I'm, I'm thinking it like this. So when you're in those long notes, you got time, you know? I mean, it only takes a fraction of a second when you're playing something random or when you're uh, improvising, you know, when you're using improv or, or you're playing something off the cuff as they would, or random, however you want to say it. When you're playing those long notes and long phrases, you've got lots and lots of split seconds. So there's plenty of time, you know? It's a good reason to play long notes and to play slowly because it gives you more of an opportunity. It's like if you had a coloring book, right? And the pictures are all huge. The, the outlines that you're coloring in are huge and there's not a lot of detail. That gives you the opportunity to color them however you want. If you want it all to be one solid color, make it the best one solid color you can make it. In other words, translate into the flute plane, um, play it slow, play it, you know, the absolute best long phrasing you can. But if you're wanting to change the colors, the, the techniques, Inside of that big picture of, say, a hippopotamus, for example, it's just an outline of a cartoon hippopotamus, you know, you've got time. You can change a shading on its head a little bit. That's one technique. You can change its arms a little bit. You know, the lighting on one arm looks like it's reaching towards you. I'm telling you, you know, this is, you're in control. It's you. <laughs> you're going to make this good. You are. I promise you. So um, you can figure out, hey, while I'm playing, what note should I play next? And that's really where this music and writing something quote unquote random um, where writing this kind of music helps you to develop you know I didn't like that I, I want to do something different I want to change it so erase a note erase three notes erase five notes erase all of them you know save that particular section outline it or highlight it or something and say this is for next this sounds really good but it doesn't sound good for the song I'm trying to write let me use this as the next song or a different song so that's really something kind of cool, something very, very interesting. Now, 
Aside from this, there is one other technique I wanted to share with you, and uh, it might help make things, uh, bring them into context, I guess, for you. Um, the reason that these notes sound differently, I've got videos on this, one of my favorite, The Sound of Science, uh, is, is a good way to describe how these notes play on the flute. So, as you're playing the Native American flute, you cover that bottom hole and it plays the lowest note. And when you have it all uncovered, it plays te technically the highest note. There's ways you can make other high notes, and we'll talk about those. But um, you can basically play the scale, the typical Native American flute scale, the minor pentatonic scale. Um, you play it like that. As you cover a hole up, you're actually lengthening the flute. And the reason that lengthening the flute makes a tonal change is because the vibrations um, actually get to travel a little further and the tone of a vibration dissipates in the air. You know, if we were playing in a vacuum, of course you couldn't play in a vacuum, but if we were playing in a vacuum, uh, it, wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't make as, as much of a difference. So, you know, there again, uh, as a tone changes, um, you know, you can, uh, you can figure out basically how it's happening if you want to look at it from that perspective. But as you cover this hole, the, the notes go kind of flat. So as you uncover them, and we go to the next note in the scale, you know, the scale actually goes kind of flat and it, uh, it really um, changes, it grows. You know, so the growth of the scale is, in very, is very important, just like the growth of this music. So as we grow the song that we're playing, as we grow it by writing new pieces to it or deciding that we want to uh, change pieces, we ourselves are also growing. You know, even myself, I've been playing for, you know, a long time at this point, 33 years at, at the point that I made this video, uh, going on 34 here. But um, at this point, I've been playing for a long time. I grew personally today by playing this music. I really did. It helped me a lot. Not only as a flute player, but as a person. You've, you've got this going on. You're in control. <laughs> oh gosh, Eddie Murphy. You don't want to push that plate away. But uh, I love that movie. Eddie Murphy, thank you. Anyway, um, so as you're, uh, you're playing, keep in mind that the scale itself, it grows. And even though it grows and changes, and even that sixth hole caused some level of growth, I think in my mind, I visualize that as a branch. It's a different direction it's going. You know, the people that have the six-hole flutes, I make six-hole flutes too, but I make them in the way that, that they would have originally been played and made so that when you play the minor pentatonic scale, it's all one, two, three, four, five notes. That's pentatonic. And then the next note is the next note in the scale. And the next note is the next note in the scale and so on and so on. Anyway, I have videos on that if you haven't seen it. So there again, Remember, when you practice, sit up straight. Try to breathe through your nose. If you're capable, at least take a deep breath. Exhale through the flute. Use the techniques we've talked about. If you can't figure out what to play next, write your own song. Replay other songs that you find. You know, I'm not the only one that's written flute tablature. Write your own song. Um, there's so many things like that you can do. And most importantly, if you have been following my curriculum, there's something you need to think about. Not only is there the next class that we have uh, coming up, but uh, you also need to think about taking criticism from your audience. If your audience is a bunch of cats and dogs, <laughs> they don't criticize too badly. If they howl with you, think that they're singing with you, not a, you know being abhorrent of your, your flute playing, because chances are they like your flute playing. Um, but I uh, think they're singing with you. Uh, I used to have a cat that always meowed and rubbed on my leg when I played the flute, so I, I felt like he enjoyed it. So that's a consideration. But um, if you have people listening to you, if they say, you know, you really could use some practice, they're probably right, you know, or maybe they could use some practice listening. It just depends on the situation. There's there's countless situations. We roll dice to figure these situations out. Life is no no less complicate, complex or complicated. I wanted to make a new word there. But... Uh, don't worry about the criticism. You're going to get there. You're going to be great. Uh, you know, we have so many new classes that you can practice with. If you don't feel like you've gotten anywhere by this class week number four here, go back to the previous lessons and study them because, you know, you will find something new every time. I find that I do when I go back over something. 
Um, the next lesson is going to be the major flute scale, uh, or rather playing the major scale on the Native American flute, which is super easy. Whether you have a five or six hole flute, don't let anybody put you in a box and tell you it's more difficult this way or more difficult that way. This is super easy, easiest instrument in the whole world. I'm not just speaking from my own experience. I've put this thing in the hands of people that have never played an instrument in their life, and they're like, wow, I can do it, you know? And you can too. You really can. It is so, so simple. So, um, the next lesson, major scale, not really the Native American flute sounding scale, but it's one that you can use, and I'll of course show you how you can use it, um, and uh, we'll talk about that. And then after that, the next lesson after that is the minor blue scale, which is one of my absolute favorites, the same scale as the Native American flute scale. It's but it has, and I know that doesn't sound too much contrasting, but We'll talk about other blue notes, which are other notes and uh, ones that you can play. And then it comes with a backing track. A lot of you probably played that backing track on my, my online class page already. More power to you. If you played along with it, even more kudos. And if you haven't tried it yet, don't worry about it. We'll get that class after next. So once again, I hope that you've enjoyed this video lesson. Don't forget, we will be having some upcoming lessons. We, this is actually a 12-week course that I've discussed, so you'll find a lot more use in these valuable lessons. The last class will be how to record your own music. A lot of people want to skip ahead to that part because, as I've always said, it's usually the second week after owning the Native American flute you decide to cut your first album. And I mean that facetiously as well as honestly, and even from, I'm probably thinking it was somewhere around that time frame for me. It's that easy. So, Charlie Montatuyella signing out. I uh, look forward to seeing you guys here for the next lesson really soon. Take care.